The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, or FISC, was created in 1978 to act as a check on the power of the executive branch, which Congress previously had found had been abusing its authority to conduct domestic surveillance in the 1960s and 70s. FIS operates under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, of 1978 and its amendments. The court is responsible for hearing requests by federal law enforcement officials to conduct surveillance of Americans or foreigners in the U.S. who are deemed a threat to national security. Few Americans had ever heard of the FISC until 2005 when media reports exposed the actions of the National Security Agency operating under orders from President George W. Bush to monitor domestic phone calls, emails, and other electronic communications that may contain information about terrorist activities. In the wake of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Congress passed the USA Patriot Act of 2001. Among its provisions were two changes to the FISC, the ability to authorize longer periods of surveillance and an increased number of judges serving on the court. The court came under intense public scrutiny again in 2013 when a top secret court order requiring Verizon to provide a daily ongoing feed of telephone call metadata to the NSA was leaked to the media by defense contractor Edward Snowden. A detailed description of the court, its history, powers, composition, and criticisms may be found in Wikipedia, which is one of your class readings. The FISC has jurisdiction to hear applications for and issue orders authorizing four traditional activities authorized under FISA. Electronic surveillance, physical searches, pen or trap surveillance, and compelled production of business records. Initially, much of the court's activities focused on assessing individual surveillance applications to determine whether probable cause or other legal protections were satisfied. Since FISA was amended in 2008, however, the court has increasingly been asked to review the government's targeting and minimization procedures related to long-term surveillance programs. The Fisk Court consists of 11 judges appointed by the Chief Justice of the United States without any confirmation by the U.S. Senate. Each judge serves for a maximum of seven years. The Chief Justice appoints a presiding judge. Utah Federal District Judge D. Benson served on the Fisk Court from 2004 to 2011. The Fisk operations are largely kept secret due to the sensitive nature of the proceedings, and the court's ex parte process is primarily non-adversarial. The target of a requested surveillance order is normally not given an opportunity to even appear at the hearing or be informed of the presence of the order. However, the court rules of procedures do allow the electronic service providers and business order recipients to petition to challenge or modify any order. Records from FISC hearings are not revealed even to petitioners challenging surveillance orders under the court rules. The FISC has discretion to publish its opinions, which until recently was rarely done. In response to growing public criticism, the court recently issued several redacted opinions in 2013 and recently ordered the Department of Justice to explain why certain other opinions should not be publicly released. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court of Review is charged with hearing appeals from applications denied by FISC. This court is made up of three judges also appointed by the Chief Justice. The Supreme Court, at least theoretically, has statutory jurisdiction to review FISC and FISC review court opinions under certain circumstances pursuant to a writ of certiorari filed by the government or a recipient of an order or directive. No such effort has been undertaken. 
The court has been recently criticized and characterized as a rubber stamp due to the fact the court rejects very few government applications for surveillance orders. The Attorney General reported to Congress that 99% of all government requests are approved. That figure was challenged by a former presiding judge of the court in 2013 when he countered that many applications are altered prior to final submission or are withdrawn. He noted that in 2012 through 2014, 24% of government requests were modified in response to questions from the court. Other criticisms of the court have centered on the appointment process of the judges, the lack of an adversarial process, and the lack of transparency, both in terms of the court's proceedings and its secret opinions and the lack of meaningful oversight of the court. The criticisms have come from members of Congress, privacy and legal scholars, and even from some former members of the court. President Obama, which has defended the court and the NSA surveillance program, has promised to look at the court's organization and operation with an eye to making appropriate reforms in how the court operates and is organized. The controversy surrounding the court and its approval of various NSA surveillance programs generated by the Edward Snowden revelations have prompted several lawsuits and numerous calls for reform by commentators and members of Congress. Some of these reforms include the following, requiring the president to nominate Fisk judges subject to Senate confirmation, allowing the chief judge of each federal circuit to point one judge each, dividing the appointment of judges between the chief justice and the majority and minority leaders of both houses of Congress, appointing a public advocate or independent counsel to participate in FISC hearings and to challenge the government's surveillance applications, requiring the court to make detailed factual findings supporting its decisions, and finally, declassifying many of the Fisk court opinions or releasing redacted opinions that reveal the resolution of the constitutional and other legal issues presented in the applications. Several of these proposed reforms are discussed in your assigned readings, which include a blog post from one of the very few private lawyers who has ever appeared before the Fisk court. This week's question of the week asked you to weigh in on the proposals for reform. See you in class for an interesting discussion on this vital topic.